You know what is almost a strictly American problem? Creationism. Most other first world countries accept the theory of evolution despite their religious views. Yet America falls behind, despite the fact that we have a bit of the world's leading research on the topic, about 40% of America still rejects evolution. You would think that a theory as researched and sound as evolution would be accepted with little to no backlash, but leave it to America to reject science. There are even some legitimate scientists who reject the theory, one such scientist being Michael Behe, who has a PhD in biochemistry from the University of Pennsylvania. You would think that someone who literally studies biology would accept the theory of evolution, right? Well, apparently not everybody does, so let us see what he has to say. Now, it turns out, if any of these parts are missing, the trap doesn't work. I want all of you to know I did not cut anything out from the beginning of the video. That is legitimately where they decided to start the video. No introduction, no nothing. So, not only is it complex, it's what I called irreducibly complex. You can't take a part away and still have it work. If you took away this hammer, you know, the mice don't get caught, take away the spring or the holding bar, any of the pieces, it doesn't work. Mouse traps are simple in design, so in comparison to something much larger, what may seem to be a small, minor change in the larger design is much more noticeable in the mouse trap. I kind of am getting the feeling that you're going to make the straw man that evolution can't add any information, it can only take things away. So I'm just going to stop you before you even make that argument. Often what drives evolution is mutation, which, simply put, is any form of change. This could be an addition of genetic information, a loss of genetic information, or anything in between. Again, that's a very much oversimplified explanation, and there's much more to it than that, but anyway. There are other factors that go that are involved with evolution and speciation, but that's one of the biggest ones. Knowing this, how can this be applied to the mousetrap? Well, I see your mousetrap doesn't have any bait, so maybe we could try putting something like a breadcrumb on it to lure in prey. If that works remarkably well, then we should start to make more mousetraps using bait. Over time, more and more mousetraps will be used alongside bait, more or less rendering the baitless traps obsolete. Now our traps have evolved to include a beneficial mutation, or change, from the original. How cool is that? Something else I would like to bring up is how evolution doesn't happen strictly in its niche. A mutation can occur that makes an organism less efficient in one way, but it adapted to do something different. Not all changes need to fit that same purpose. Now the problem for Darwin's theory is, is that, number one, the molecular foundation of life is is run by machines. The cell is run by actual machines made out of molecules. Well, I mean, yeah, kinda. Our collective person is a living unit that consists of more and more smaller living units, which are also made of more and more smaller living units. We are pretty much just a collection of smaller living units that have adapted to survive their living environments together. I don't see the issue with that. People <laughs> find that fantastic, but hey, that's that's the way it is. There are little machines that act like uh, outboard motors that can propel cells along and other machines that carry cargo from one part of a cell to another. When I think of the wonders of the human body, I personally do feel at all with how interesting and complicated, complex even, our bodies are. But when I look at us, I don't imagine up some sort of divine creator. I think about how we're just the current result of millions of years of adaptive change. We were never meant to be perfect, and that's why we're so far from it. We were just meant to be able to survive in our environment. And those machines, just like pretty much any machine, and including the mousetrap, have a number of different parts performing different roles, and they're all needed for the machine to work. Darwin's theory of uh, evolution requires that natural selection favor an organism that has a very small change that helps the organism do something better. A lot of the time the changes are somewhat small, but there are also instances where something very, very noticeable occurs. And about that thing you said, how every part of the trap is needed for it to work, that's because we humans designed it to work efficiently in the environment we needed it. Here's another brain game for you. What if we were to change the environment the trap was in to something different? Let us say, hypothetically, a place where there is little to no sunlight. Possibly deep underwater. What might be a beneficial change to our trap? Well, I'm sure we all already know what might be a beneficial change based on something else that lives down there already. If we were able to make the bait that we added illuminate, that might increase its efficiency at attracting prey, drawing in creatures that are attracted to that light. You see, 
If we keep up this process of adding and changing what we already have, at some point we might have something completely different from the original. Possibly even something that no longer requires many of its original parts. Many of those parts might become something some might even call vestigial. So if we're taking that view of Darwinism, we can ask how could something like this, something like a mousetrap, be put together one tiny step at a time? And it turns out <laughs> it's surprisingly difficult. You, you know, if you just had the wooden platform, just the bottom, that doesn't catch mice. No, not really, and it was never supposed to. You see, not only are you getting into a watchmaker argument, it's not even a good one. We see stuff like what you're talking about all the time in nature. The wood at the base of the mousetrap was not originally meant to catch mice, nor was the mitochondria originally supposed to power entire animals. It was just an independent organism that became a part of larger and larger organisms, and now is pretty much necessary for many of forms of life to survive. If you put on, say, this, this holding bar, you might say, well, maybe if a mouse is running along, it would trip on the platform and impale itself on the holding bar. <laughs> but that's, that's kind of silly. That would be a change, or mutation, that caused the mousetrap to be less efficient. Nobody would use the mousetrap like that after seeing how inefficient it is, and that selection pressure would render that addition of the mousetrap, again, obsolete. That's how natural selection works. It selects organisms with mutations which are best suited for their environment and lets them survive over less efficient organisms. Seriously, if you don't even know what survival of the fittest is, then I don't think you have any place to try and disprove evolution. Uh, so, this can't be made gradually. So that's a big problem for Darwin's theory because pretty much the foundation of life, these things are, are all over the place. Not only is what you're talking about not living organisms or chemicals, and so it would not be a perfect analogy for the nitty gritty bits of evolution, especially when it comes to reproduction, something that is pivotal in evolution, but I already went over how not every single part of that contraption needs to have the same independent purpose for them to be able to work together. And furthermore, you can ask yourself, well, how do we recognize intelligence? I knew you were stepping into watchmaker territory. I just knew it. But I'll do you one better. What even is intelligence? And it turns out that the way that we recognize intelligence is by what I called a purposeful arrangement of parts. I assume you're going to make the claim that we humans are a purposeful arrangement of parts. Cool! I assume that also means that you're going to somehow prove that arrangement of parts was purposeful in less than two minutes. I could spill a glass of Minute Maid and you could claim I did it on purpose because it looked like I did, but could it not have been that it was a complete accident? And that's when different parts are put up in relationship to each other, where you can see that they have a purpose, that is the arrangement has a purpose. But how can you tell it has a purpose? Is it because our bodies work somewhat in unison with itself? That's because we wouldn't know that it works if it didn't because we wouldn't be alive. We are the ones with the arrangement of parts that worked, so how would you know that it was purposeful? An easy example are letters in a word. You know, people put the letters into form a word, words to make a sentence and so on. And not only is this arrangement, uh, this can't be put together gradually, but we immediately see that the arrangement of these parts has a purpose. And so we immediately grasp the intelligence that was needed to produce something like this. Okay, so demonstrate that. You're just saying stuff expecting us to believe you. These things that you're talking about are not equivalent. I cannot believe I had to say this, but human bodies are not the same as words. And again, I can't emphasize enough that Darwin didn't know anything about the foundation of life. So what? We are just barely getting started on studying abiogenesis, but that does not mean he couldn't have recognized the obvious pattern of evolution. Knowing how life began and knowing the foundation of life is completely irrelevant right now because even though we may not know exactly how everything started, that doesn't mean we can't know about anything that came after that. God, this is just the god of the g- You are literally hating every theological fallacy. It hasn't even been five minutes, dude. He and his contemporaries thought that the cell was a little piece of jello, protoplasm, they'd call it. And it was mysterious, you know, did cool stuff, but they didn't know how, so they pretty much ignored it. Yeah, cell and germ theory weren't exactly common knowledge back then, so Darwin and his peers weren't quite experts in those fields. 
But again, that is completely irrelevant to the story of Darwin and his research on the origin of species. He doesn't need to know every little bit of every little detail to recognize that something happens. Sure, we know more than him now, and know a lot more about how cells work, but he was able to demonstrate evolution fairly well. We're just able to tell you more about how and why it happens. He showed that it did. But uh, modern science has shown that it's the cell is a lot like a ultra-sophisticated nanoscale factory. Sophisticated is quite the stretch. Far, far beyond anything that humans could produce. Not quite, but that also doesn't matter. And again, they're, they're just chock full of machinery that are, is much more sophisticated than this simple little mousetrap. That mousetrap was designed by humans to do one job as simply as possible. We are entire people that need to do much more than that trap. Also, you do know that those parts of the trap are also made up of molecules, too, right? So, um, so not only have I become skeptical of Darwin, but, you know, uh, you can readily see the design in life. So, uh, I've argued that, that uh, many of these machines were purposefully designed. You've argued that, but you've not proven that. You have not convinced me that we are purposefully designed because you have not demonstrated that to be the case. You can whine about evolution all you want, but that doesn't change anything. Evolution happens and explains the abundance of life on Earth. I haven't talked about this at all up until now because I know it's just an attention-grabbing title, but it's very bold of you to claim that you can destroy all of Darwin's work on the origin of species with a single mousetrap in just five minutes. Yes, I know I'm just talking about Darwin and not the theory of evolution as a whole. That's what the title claims to be done in the video. Again, the title is meant to grab people's attention, but why do I still get the feeling that these people wouldn't even know the difference between our modern theory of evolution and what Darwin wrote about over 150 years ago? The modern theory is much more than Darwin's theory. So much so that if we were to bring Darwin back to life today, he would think it marvelous to see how far we've come from his original works. There's actually this book that I highly recommend for those who are interested in learning more about it. It's called On the Origin of Evolution by John and Mary Gribben. Anyway, that's all that video I had to offer, and I am just as disappointed as I thought I would be. You know, it's very telling how just about everyone who opposes the theory of evolution are people who are completely unqualified and or couldn't even efficiently describe it to anyone, let alone understand it themselves. Most, if not all, People who reject the theory of evolution were born into a situation where they were lied to about it and cheated out of an actual education, typically from radical evangelical parents who put them in private Christian schools, live in states where religion has power over science and education like Oklahoma or Tennessee, or have terrible teachers who are either too scared to challenge a student's beliefs or too much of a degenerate person to the point where they wouldn't teach their students the theory of evolution because they don't believe in the theory themselves and so they want to restrict it from others even if that means cheating kids out of a proper education which is why many young Earth creationists can't describe to people what evolution actually is, because they weren't taught what it is. We need to force religion not only out of politics, but out of education as well, because it's doing nothing but holding us back and has no right to deny kids or students of any kind to a proper education. For too long have there been bills that outright banned the teaching of evolution, or only just moderated it if lucky, stickers and notes that are reductive to the validity of evolution in actual biology textbooks, and influential persons who seek to keep the people they have influence over into an echo chamber until they're too old to break out of it. Over the years, things have slowly been getting better, but that rate is not enough. It was 97 years ago that the Scopes monkey trial happened, and we still see history repeating itself. We need to do more which is why I intend to make more videos like this, however little impact I may have. So subscribe if you want to see more, and like the video to let me know you enjoyed it. Have a good night.